Anyway. <laughs> Matthew, don't! <laughs> Matthew, yes! Before my words could reach his ears, Matthew opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Uh, um... Well, Adrami stopped as Susan and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh... <laughs> Hi? Idiot. I love you, but you're an idiot. I cannot believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, somebody do something other than stand there. Who are you? Suzu, let me explain. What's going on here? Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. Soon, the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Pick one. They're in your head! <laughs> Susie reached out and poked Matthew on the forehead, making him stare cross-eyed at her finger. Uh, hello to you too? Seems real to me. They're not imaginary. Uh... It was no use! There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand land on my shoulder, and felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi and it sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Susan sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Susan as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Well, you see, uh... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. It's such a huge house. A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well... Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work, so she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Friendship! Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. We're gonna hang out and chill. We're gonna yeah, hang like out and chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. Let's try the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Suzu? Oh, yep. really? They call it Muzu. <laughs> Oh, God, you just sent me a picture of your foot. Yes, I told you it was bloody. Oh, my. That is grotesque and somehow my aesthetic. <laughs> anyway. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. 
Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Yes, seriously. Sam, not now. You're the one who got my floor all bloody. Well, I... Yeah. And then assaulted me. <laughs> yeah, Sam. I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my By friends. Way, go out with friends. Sam! Go out with friends. You finish your chores in, like, a second flat anyways. Yeah, and then he just does Tai Chi. Like, excuse me, ripped shirt bro. Anyway, uh... I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Go out, friends! Go out, with go friends. out, friends! Go I'll out, go out friends. with Susie and Naomi. Are you sure? I'm sure. I trust these guys to be able to work everything out. Thank you for trusting us, miss. We'll have everything done for you by the time you return Yay. home. Yay! All right, we'll hey. wait here while you go get your things. I was strangely relieved to know that everything was going to be okay while I was gone from the house. I trusted the guys enough to do everything they could for this house party, so my mind focused itself on hanging out with my friends. Eventually, I was out the door, walking through towards Naomi's car with Naomi and Suzu. Suzu grabbed the entire back seat as I took the passenger's side. Naomi started the car and drove off towards the city. Hey, Suzu, as long as you're buckled in. Safety! It was nice driving out with my friends. After all that had happened, it was good to just go out and forget my troubles. Well, since we got you out of the house, we might as well go to the mall and walk around a bit. We did just eat breakfast after all. Yeah, that was a good meal though. Could have had more flavor in my opinion. Suzu, you eat chili peppers when you're bored. Everything you eat always needs more flavor. Same here though. I still can't get over that, Suzu. <laughs> None of that. Remember, we, we we can't be spicy with Naomi. Naomi's white. <laughs> I mean, they're both white, but... You never eat spicy things. And I guess we're half You don't know how it feels. <laughs> Anyways, after the mall, what do you want to do? We could go to the chill Pink Lady Cafe Kay. and chill out we're with Kay. Be Kay. I'm sure she'd Kay. love the company. Yeah, but I want to know... stop by the arcade. What, they what the hell is up with this cave Orion. person? You get to control this guy named Isaku, and you're part of the rebel forces, and you get to shoot things, and there's robots, and... Oh, I want to go to the arcade, too. <laughs> uh, is this the reference to a game that they had for real? Maybe? I can't think of anything. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Orion, a sci-fi visual novel on Steam. Ah! Sheesh, we get it, Suzu, we get it. We'll go to here, the arcade. Here, here, here you go. Which one first, though? You know how popular Kay is. She'll be swapped with customers later in the day. I'd rather go in the late afternoon. She has better options during the last hour of the cafe. So basically after the arcade? You figured me out so quickly, Patterson. What did I tell you about using my last name? Well, let's go to the cafe. The cafe! We're gonna eat some sweets. We're gonna get some sweet lovin'. I question the interior design of this place. <laughs> I really question this. This is, this is some Trey BN BS. Did you get my reference? What? I said this is some Trey BN BS. Uh. Phoenix Wright. Oh! Ace Attorney. Third game. Third case. <laughs> Tender Lender. I thought I thought you were saying Trey B N like the letters. <laughs> I didn't get it. I don't look. <laughs> I can't speak French. Okay, how do you say that? Beyond. Oh, Trey Beyond. Mm hmm. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was Trey B N this whole <laughs> time. Wow. But yeah, I I think I think um, I think Mr. Armstrong is the one who designed this place. <laughs> anyway. We hit the mall and walked around a bit, as, as we planned, before driving over to the Pink Lady Cafe. It was a small, home-style cafe with a lot of pink. And when I say a, a lot, lot of, pink, of pink, I mean a lot of pink! Oh, oh, hey, Kay. She looks like the Little Mermaid. She does. She looks like Pyrrha. Oh, yeah, that who? The, ca 
cafe was crowded, but we definitely caught Kay's attention as we walked in. Hey, girls, hey! Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you! Have a seat, I'll be with you in a minute, okay? And there she is, as busy as usual! <sighs> Told you we should have gone to the arcade first. Naomi glared at Suzu before leading us to her table to sit at. Suzu sat across from me as Naomi sat to my side. After a couple seconds of settling into our seats, Kay slid into the empty fourth seat with a smile. So, how's everything been? My grandfather's dead. Crazy! Fair. Life's <laughs> always crazy with you. But I can tell Suzu's not happy to be here. That kind of breaks my heart, you know. I like Kay. <laughs> <laughs> Suzu smirked and gently punched Kay in the shoulder, making Kay laugh. Naomi and I chuckled at the sight. Kay and Suzu were like sisters, wild and crazy. However, Kay didn't have any known relatives, so it was always nice to see her connect with Suzu. How about you, Naomi? Have you figured out your problems? No, and now's not the time to talk about them, Kay. Ooh, Naomi keeping secrets from us? That's a first. Ooh. <laughs> she holds more than secrets, I'll tell you that. Ooh. Ooh. You Ooh. guys! Oh, God. Oh, dear. <laughs> about it, Naomi. You can tell us on your own time. Naomi stared at me briefly before smiling in relief and happiness. This is this is a scary scene. <laughs> this is frightening. <laughs> Kay giggled as Susie rolled her eyes and groaned. Eventually, the four of us just decided to chat and talk about random events that happened to us. I decided to not speak about the boys and just focus on school. Truly, though, it was relaxing to feel somewhat human again, without thinking about incubi or anything of that sort. Simple young adult problems were enough for me to handle. I can't. This is so weird reading this over this CG. I know. We eventually lost track of the time and wound up staying longer than we expected, making us unable to stop at the arcade before going home to dress for the house wedding party. Kay, as much as she wanted to come, and had other plans. But wished us the best. The hour of the house party had arrived. In my mind, I kept double and triple checking the essentials for the party, knowing my dad, he invited his business partners and the executives of the Anderson Company to show me off. I stood in front of my mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time, it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectations. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. It was my test to see if I was really ready to live on my own. Well, not truly alone, I had the incubi to thank. But I didn't have my dad guiding me or my mom helping me through living alone. A knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprising me. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. All right. As soon as I opened the door of the hall, I watched as Naomi and Suze's faces turned from smiles to complete awestruck stares. What? Dude, you look hot. Yeah, you look amazing. Where did you get that dress? I have it for a while. I just never had the chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. I stepped out of my room and closed my bedroom door behind me. As I walked down the hall to the grand lobby, the incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed to the nines as proper servants. Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? Yeah. I was slightly taken aback on how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gentleman, even Sam. I slowly began to climb down the steps with Suzu and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descended the staircase one step at a time, like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face slightly flush, but I quickly shook my head to try and regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked me down that final step, Smiling. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Thank you. So, are you prepared for tonight? I will never be ready for this. As ready as I'll ever be. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. 
The party was more than what it seemed, and I had done all that I could to prepare for it. Now it was all up to Unme. Or fate. <laughs> all according now, to Keikaku. <laughs> Keikaku means plan. The other boy smiled assuringly at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened the double doors wide to reveal my parents, both dressed in their best. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, my. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. It was probably overlooked. Besides, who would deny good service? I was completely shocked. My parents didn't question the boys. They didn't ask for verification or anything. I looked at the boys and noticed Sam and Eric staring intently at my parents. Were they using their powers on them? They had to be. There was no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. I guess the servants counted as belongings to the <laughs> house. That's some... <laughs> That's a different kind of story. <laughs> <laughs> My mother quickly rushed me and gave me a large hug. I hugged her back, inhaling her perfume. It had only been a couple of days, but living away from the ones who raised me was hard. My mother soon let me go and looked at my outfit. <clears throat> Gorgeous. You look so lovely. David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. I looked to my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I stood my ground waiting for him to look at me. Look at me! <laughs> when he did, he let out a small smile grace his lips. Your mother's right. You look like you're all grown up. The world around me stopped as my heart pounded hard in my chest. Did my dad just compliment me on his own accord? My mother was grinning ear to ear at his words. I was beyond speechless. Thank you, Daddy. However, his cold face quickly returned as he began to look around once again. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? What do you mean? The entire board from Anderson Toys is coming tonight. Even the vice chairman's son will be coming. All of them will be measuring your potential. My potential? To become CEO of the company. I knew it. Something was off about tonight, and now this party had become more than I anticipated. I gulped silently, but I nodded in response. I looked at the incubi, but they were continuing to be servants for my father's approval. I looked behind me and saw Naomi and Suzu raise their thumbs at me for encouragement. I let a small breath before feeling my body accept the situation. I felt a weight in my gut, but I had to hide it. As if time zoomed forward, all of a sudden the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men and women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me in my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. I shook hands with many officials and executive members, putting on the professional face my dad trained me to have. I felt overwhelmed, but I hid it behind a small smile and handshake. And many even asked me questions like if I was single. I tried my best to reply as maturely as possible. I had to remember, say what they want to hear, not what you want to say. Yes, I have a boyfriend. I'm not gay or bisexual. Haha. <laughs> Bye. So, how do you feel living on your own at such a young age? I'm doing my best. Mouse, mouse, mouse. There you go. Oh are. no. I'm so <laughs> sorry about your grandfather passing away. It really hit all of us hard. Did you even know him? <laughs> Excuse me, I need Excuse to me. go. I need to go. Thank you for your Do you have college plans? There's a possibility. <laughs> college. I don't need that. <laughs> I felt like the questions came up one after another. It was tough to answer some of them because they weren't about me. They were about the company. What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? Don't ask me, I have no freaking clue. What do you think of the philanthropic policy the company has? It's a policy that reflects my own values, so I personally if think I it's great. I'm thirsty. <laughs> I'd be Do you more think the company should expand profits. from just toys? Money, money, money. It's a possibility. 
Eventually, the question stopped, and I was brought back to being by myself. Naomi and Susie were mingling in the crowds, and the incubi were doing their jobs. So I was all alone in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about, but at least I wasn't being questioned left and right anymore. Suddenly, though, my mom pushed her way through the crowd to me, bringing along someone I didn't know. Oh, boy. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. With my mother stood a man who looked to be only a couple years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. There's gonna nod. Hi. Andrew was slightly taken aback, but gently smiled and lowered his hand with a nod in return. My mother smiled at us both, which made me concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? Why do you think? So, um, uh, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Compulsory heterosexuality. Um, I apologize if I made you uncomfortable in some way. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Huh? Why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and the rather personal questions. I looked at Andrew, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off. I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. Wait, I wonder. Do you think Grandpa was teaching him magic? Dark magic? No. no. Why not? Uh, because he's not part of the family? I don't know. What is so off about Andrew Lewis? What is his deal? I don't know. When when we first played the game back in Damien's Root, I thought maybe like he was Malix in disguise or something. Or like possessed or something. But mm. I I don't know. I don't what is supposed think to be that's is, it. Is, is, is he a murderer? <laughs> I felt someone walk up beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad giving his cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. So, you're Jared's son. He went to Jared! Andrew's body twitched slightly. Whether it was fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become, enough to break at the wrong word. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. Well... I stared at Andrew. Maybe he's in the this... same position as us. Hmm. This guy wanted to take my grandfather's place as CEO? I thought the vice chairman wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. I mean, Nothing but... wrong with that. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. If you'll excuse me. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. I watched as he disappeared into the crowd toward the back of the house. Bye. I was worried, but I gave him his space. He obviously needed it. <laughs> He's not CEO material. <laughs> Neither are you with your stupid attitude. That's yeah, you're because not you practically meant to be interrogated the young man. A little questioning shouldn't have bothered him. He's obviously not ready for any title in our company. I bit my tongue. I didn't want to make a scene with my dad. One wrong word and he'd lecture me in front of everyone. This was not something I wanted at my housewarming party. I let out a sigh before looking at the clock. It was getting close to midnight, meaning that the party was going to end soon. I lowered my gaze out the window and saw a limo pull up. Huh? Whose limo is that? Hmm? Oh, that must be Lewis's car. I'll go get him. Stay with your father so you can like. escort your guests out together. 
Yes, Mum. My mother left my dad and me to slowly escort the guests out. My dad held a simple smile as he thanked each person for coming. I did the same. Andrew quickly passed the doors before I could speak. Bye, bitch. Eventually, only Susan, Naomi, my parents, and the incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing over my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. Oh. Thank you, Dad. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. Oh. Right. All right. Your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. All right? Right. See ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Will do. All four of my reigning guests left the building, all but my dad waving back to me. With the last of the guests gone, I sighed and sat on the sack, stair, sat, the sack case, the staircase. Exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Words. Oh, that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Shut Give your her mouth, a break, Sam. Man, she was getting into. She handled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some... Uh, boys, 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 boys. Nobody sure. wants Alex. to bang the boys at this part. There are the demons. And, I mean, sorry, the devils. They're devils, not demons. Fuck There's up. a difference. They made sure there was a difference. And Malx has a funny laugh. Fuck. We're gonna duck and run. We're gonna not get hit by the devil. And Eris is kind of hot. I kind of wish she was root, but we probably shouldn't date a devil. That would probably be bad. We're gonna go to sleep. And everybody's like, I love you.